Hi, Mike. How are you? Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing great. To start, can I ask you a kind of actory question? Okay. I like actory questions. So, so uh, you're not a stranger to doing action sequences, but how does something like the union sit in your body versus something like Luke Cage where you have the gun in this and you're kind of doing the like stealth maneuvers mm -hmm. versus, you know, just having the mentality of someone who's invincible? Well, yeah, I think that's a good question. I think, I think being um, vulnerable and actually being able to um, be hurt are, um, is always a different feeling in your body is playing a character. Um, the stakes are higher. You know, you just, you just, your body moves differently. You feel different about everything. Um, and I think that's, uh, that the fun thing about playing someone like Nick, I think Nick always had this sort of, he didn't have a, I guess, um, death wish, but he, but he was willing to, I think, I, I mean, not to give away, but at the end, it's like, he has a choice between, you know, he does have a choice. He makes mm -hmm. a choice, and the choice is about like you know. It's like, do I want to do I want to live like this, or do or, or is or is there an option? Like, if I'm not living like this, is it really worth it? And I think I think there are people who who live their life that way, and I think that's the undercurrent of Nick's character. There are certain people who are thrill seekers. There are certain people who do things that are inherently dangerous and death defying at all times, but they rather do that than to live a normal life like other people and just avoid those things. So I, I sort of identified that with Nick, and that was sort of the, the crux of what he was doing the entire time. It's like he made a choice, and it was like either that or nothing. That was what he wanted. When, how, does, how do you kind of prepare for the mentality of someone like that who is just constantly living on the edge and doesn't necessarily care about the, the repercussions. repercussions of it? Yeah. Um, it, it, just, it just relieves you of a lot of um, concerns or, or, I guess, um, there's, you're, you're, con you're not as conscious about, um, about people uh, and how they feel about you, which frees you up. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think in life, I think if we ever all thought about it, and this is something that I think I'm working on even to this day, and some people never achieve it because they're not even seeking it. But if you ever get to the point where you don't care what people think about you, whew, that's scary. It's a scary, but it's also free. And I think there's a little balance, but there is this moment of like in moments in life where we do something that's just for us. You know, like mm -hmm. we do something that's just for us and people are gonna complain, but how long are they gonna complain about it, right? I mean, they'll move on. How long are they gonna be mad at you? They'll move on. And you did it and it's like, it's done. You wanted to do it and there you go. That's how it is. And I think I think there's always this, this inherent society pressure of like, if you do that, people are gonna judge you. Of course they're gonna judge you. They're gonna judge you anyway. So why don't you just do it anyway? All right, you're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. Then, you, then, you, then you did it, right? So it's like, I think Nick is like, oh, all right, well, they're gonna hate me, probably hate me anyway. Well, they'll get over it, you know what I mean? I love it. He's just like, nah, who cares? Yeah. Uh, for my last question, I do have to ask, how cool does it feel when you are doing the thing where you're like, you have the gun and you're like down the hallway kind of yeah. doing the like, let me check all of the check, corners? Check, check in the corners, yeah, corner check, uh, uh, tactical maneuvers. It's funny, every time I do any tactical maneuvers, any time I'm playing a character, whether, uh, doesn't matter. Everybody, you always go through technical training. You always go through um, a certain amount of rehearsing um, prior to, you know, pre-production. Pre and everybody has a different way of doing everything. There is, you know, there there are um, armed forces um, people in Europe that do certain things a certain way. They're Americans. Everyone everyone take checks rooms a different way. Everybody holds weapons mm -hmm. a different way. Everybody proceeds a different way. It's a signal sometimes, a universal. Sometimes they're not. So it's interesting that you have to sort of brush yourself up with the way they want to do it. But I, I enjoy it. It's all it's fun. You know, we it's just a fun, you know, expensive, uh, very sophisticated cops and robbers that we always played as a kid you know it's just, it's just what we do you're just like now we're doing it with a giant camera giant camera <laughs> ignore the giant camera and all the people behind the giant camera ignore all of that ignore craft services yes just ignore that play cops and robbers. <laughs> just playing cops and robbers i love it thank you so much for talking with me before i leave i have to say uh, i live in new york and i call the bar in the east village the luke cage bar whenever i'm like you want to go to the luke the, cage bar oh the one on seventh and, and avenue b on top by thompson yeah. square park I took. I have a oh, photo like, of that in my in my house in the East Coast. It's. Uh, I love that. I bet it's a dive bar. It's a really really good bar. I like that bar. It's a dive bar, but it's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. All right. Have a great one.